Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us, kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power is scars and struggles. Thou forever. 
Harvest Church. We celebrate his faithfulness. Let's bow our heads together across this room as our men come forward to take their places for the morning offering. Father, it is in Jesus' name that we bow before you with full hearts, thanking you, O God, for your faithfulness in our lives. God, you are as consistent in your faithfulness as the rising and setting of the sun. And we say thank you, God. Thank you for your faithfulness to us as a church. Lord, how you've led us all of these years. Father, thank you for your faithfulness in showing up each and every Sunday. Your presence is here. Lord, for speaking to our hearts through the preaching and teaching of your word, for your faithfulness in leading our pastor here 28 years ago. God, you are so faithful to us. And Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you for being faithful to keeping us on mission, moving forward in the name of your son, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness. And Lord, it is with this heart of gratitude that we return our tithes and offerings, our resources to you, Lord. It is motivated out of love for your faithfulness toward us. And so would you take these tithes and offerings, multiply them so that your name will continue to be made great in our neighborhood and in the nations. Thank you, oh Lord, for your faithfulness. And it's in Jesus' name we all pray. All God's people said, amen and amen. Go ahead and be seated as we continue in worship.
This is our series, His Story, Your Story, and you can begin making your way to the 19th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 19. Our prayer, our purpose in this series of messages, His Story, Your Story, are to meet the people who met Jesus, whose lives were transformed, no more, no longer the same, by the power of Jesus Christ. We want to know more and more about Him, who He is and what He is like. So this is a gospel-centered series. But it's also about you and me, that the story of Jesus would become our story, that we would share in the life of Jesus Christ. So we are meeting one by one people who encountered Christ, Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night, a Samaritan woman who met Jesus at a well in her life was changed to a demoniac, a man possessed of a legion of demons who was delivered and saved. And today, a well-known story uh, about a man named Zacchaeus. I've been knowing this story for really all my life since I can remember because it's a Sunday school story for those who grew up in church or in Sunday school. It is the story about a little song, a little jingle we used to sing. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, for I'm going to your house today. We could just clap along the way and sing that song. And uh, it's a happy song. And of course, it's a fun story to be thinking about this little man. If we were casting Zacchaeus in a movie, it would be Danny DeVito for sure, uh, who, who would play Zacchaeus, the little man who climbed up in a tree just to get a glimpse of Jesus who was passing by. The author, Luke, of the gospel gives us a great summary of what happened in the first 10 verses of Luke 19. He entered Jericho, that is Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through. And let me say, Jesus is passing through today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He's in this place. He's passing through. Those of you who are watching online right now are on television. Jesus is passing by where you are. He is alive, and He's present today. So Jesus is passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. His parents named him Zacchaeus, or Zach. We have a grandson who's named Zachary, or Zach, akin to this name Zacchaeus. So Zach, it means pure one or righteous one. But he was anything but pure and righteous. Because the, the Scripture says he was a chief tax collector, and it's noted that he was rich. Now, tax collectors had a terrible reputation, uh, close to what we would surmise to be a crack dealer in our time. Someone said that Zacchaeus was a half-pint kingpin of the Jericho tax machine. He was a kind of godfather, chief tax collector of the extortionist, the scam artist, that the Jewish people knew as tax collectors because they were skimming and scamming off the top, off the backs of the people for the Romans. And so Zacchaeus was a despised individual, and he had earned his reputation, no doubt. And so he was rich. But verse 3 says he was seeking to see who Jesus was, just a glimpse. But on account of the crowd, he could not. Can you see it? The crowd's elbowing the little guy in the face. Get back, Zacchaeus. Not here, Zacchaeus. Not on my space, Zacchaeus. He can't see over the crowd. So what did he do? He ran ahead, verse 4, and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was about to pass that way. The moment was coming, and Zacchaeus knew that it wouldn't last for long. He just had to see Jesus, who he was, what he was about. The reputation of Jesus was well known by this time. 
Everyone, virtually everyone in Israel knew about Jesus. The promised Messiah, some said. And Jesus performed miracles and called disciples and spoke words like no one had ever heard. And the common people heard him gladly. So Zacchaeus, along with the citizens of Jericho, which was uh, no small town, it was a resort type area known for its palm trees and its beautiful fragrances. Jericho actually means perfume. And, and, and so it's a, it was a, a beautiful place with many citizens. He, Zacchaeus, is the chief tax collector uh, of this town. So he probably had the biggest house in town. He's living in luxury, and yet he's little, he's lonely, he's lost. And Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. So he pulls up his little robe, his little skirt, and can't you just see his little hairy legs running, running, running ahead of the crowd? And he shinnies up this sycamore tree, gets out on a limb, and is looking for Jesus just to see him pass by. Verse 5, and when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. I wonder how long it had been since Zacchaeus had smiled like this. No stack of money had ever made him this happy. He's smiling from ear to ear. Jesus had invited himself to his house, so he received him joyfully. Verse 7, the religious snobs, of course, when they saw it, they all grumbled. The crowd was saying, what? He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. One of the reasons that Zacchaeus may have known of Jesus was because of Matthew, also a tax collector, who at the first of our Lord's ministry on earth heard the call of Christ and left his tax collecting job and followed Jesus. He said, here am I, Lord, you can have it all. And he began to follow Jesus, so much so that while Jesus was there in his hometown, he said, Jesus, I've got some tax collector friends. It's a bad crowd. But would you come over to my house and talk to my friends about how they can know you, how they can know God, and do in you what you've done for me, to do in them what you have done for me? And Jesus went to the party, and he was accused of being hanging out with bad people, tax collectors and wine bibbers and drunkards and the like. Was it Matthew's testimony that somehow influenced this man, Zacchaeus, to pay attention, to want to see Jesus? Well, it happened. Jesus, the friend of sinners, aren't you glad that Jesus is a friend of sinners? Because we all are in that group. For all have sinned and come short. We're all little in the eyes of God. We have sinned and broken God's commandments. And so he wants to see Jesus. He runs to see Jesus. He climbs this tree. He comes down. He went up that tree lost. He came down that tree found. He went up that tree a great sinner. He came down that tree trusting in a great Savior. He went up lost. He came down saved because Jesus said, today, look at it, today salvation, verse 9, today salvation has come to this house since he also is a son of Abraham. This is a Jewish man who is now receiving the Messiah, Jesus, in his life. Now a true son of Abraham. What a story. This sinner who is saved by the power and the presence of the Savior because the mercy in Jesus is greater than the sin in you and me. Zacchaeus, the wee little man, the wicked man man whose life is forever changed 
like yours and mine when we follow Jesus. It doesn't matter how wealthy or successful you are. Jesus came for the down and out. He also came for the up and out. It doesn't matter if you're down and out or up and out. You're still out and out without the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, as a pastor formerly down in West Palm Beach, and Palm Beach is there, and here in North Dallas, in fact, if you live in America compared to the to the world. We have great riches in our country and certainly in our area. I mean, there's many wealthy people. And over these years, I've met many people who are successful. And yet, whether you're down and out or up and out, every person is empty without God, without Christ in their lives. Every person like Zacchaeus is lonely and lost. Every person is guilty of sin and needs a Savior. We can try to cover our sin. But only Jesus by His blood can cleanse our sin, and the guilt is always going to be there until we meet God's grace in the person of Christ. Jesus died on the cross, and His blood covers our sin and gets us through and over our guilt and our regrets, and we can know redemption, restoration in Christ. Every every person is empty. Every person is lonely. That's why Uh, there's this kind of cosmic loneliness that exists in so many people. You can be at the mall, you can be in your own home, you can be at a party, you can be at church, and yet there's this sense of being all alone and afraid. And then there's that fear of death. Every person, regardless of the bravado that some express, every person is afraid to die. There's a bondage, the Bible says, to death. Jesus defeated the power of death. But until you meet Jesus, the resurrection, you, you live in this bondage that you're facing death and an eternity without God. And uh, is there an afterlife? And where will I be in the afterlife? Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? People are afraid to die. All people, just like Nicodemus, need a Savior. And this man who was so successful in his own eyes, he had a lot of money and lived in luxury, but he was lost. And the Scripture says in verse 10 of Luke 19 that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. That is the mission statement of Jesus, Luke 19.10. The Son of Man, Son of God, Jesus, came. Why did God leave heaven to come to this earth? To seek and to save the lost. He was on a mission of love. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Uh, the, The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. That's the mission of Jesus Christ. And therefore, it is the mission of His church. It's the mission of the Christian. His mission, His passion is our mission, our passion, to seek to save the lost. If you want to know why we exist as a people, as Prestonwood Church, here is why, to seek to save the lost. We do many things as a church, and there are ministries of the church whether it is fellowship and friendship and, and, of course, Bible study and discipleship and training people and equipping people in life and developing strong and healthy marriages and kids and families, and, and, and we have missions in the community, and, and we're involved in salt and light in the world. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, just in following up as to what I just talked to you about, our trip to Washington, somebody might think, do, do, do we really need to be in politics like that? Of course we should be in politics. Christians should be in everything, in business, in banking, in media, movies, television, entertainment, politics, you name it. Our influence should be there. But that's not our mission. The mission is to be there for this purpose, to seek to save the lost. To seek and to save the lost. Now, in this case, the lost, what does it mean to be lost? It's not to be misplaced. 
we lose things often. I lose my keys or my cell phone, and we lose it. We misplace it. But that's not what the word here, loss, is really talking about. Loss is the idea of not fulfilling a purpose. It is when something loses its meaning or its value or its purpose. Its purpose is loss. Its value is lost. I have in dresser drawers and drawers at my study, I have all kinds of of technological stuff, wires and plug-in stuff. I don't even know what it's there for anymore. I don't know what it plugs into. You know, it, it, uh, it has no purpose. Uh, or maybe you, you have a pen that won't work. You know, <laughs> it won't work. It, it's lost. It's, fu- it's not fulfilling its purpose. I've got in my dresser drawer, I've got single socks, one. <laughs> because I keep thinking that the other one's going to show up. But what use is a single sock? Where do they go, by the way? I don't know. But a single sock, it has no no purpose. Well, that's the idea. When a human life is lost, when a person is lost, it means you have no purpose. There's no fulfillment. There's no being what God intended for you to be and to do for Him. You're, you're You're just lost. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. To be lost means you are therefore lost to God, and you are lost really to people, and you are lost forever apart from a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's what hell is. It is eternal lostness and separation from God. Every person without Jesus Christ is lost. That is the cry of the damned in hell. Lost. Lost. Forever lost. But Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. That's our mission. So what do we see in this story? It's the title of the message, God Knows Your Name. Jesus Knows Your Name. When Zacchaeus is up in that tree, maybe kind of hiding behind a branch or a limb, he's out on a limb without him, and Jesus stops and looks up and locks eyes with Zacchaeus, he then calls his name Zacchaeus. I cannot help but believe that a beautiful smile creased the face of our blessed Lord. Zacchaeus, he called his name. And in this, think about it, we see God's grace. Here was a man whose name meant pure, righteous, just. He was anything but until Jesus came along and called him by name. He didn't say, hey, you, or hey, bad guy in the tree, or short stuff, come out of the tree, Zacchaeus, righteous one. When Jesus calls your name and calls you to himself, he calls you by what you can be, righteous in him. We are not righteous in ourselves, but we are righteous righteous in Him. He makes us what we aren't. Our identity is now secure in Christ. Call me anything. Zacchaeus had been called a lot of names. When he passed by, it wasn't Mr. Zacchaeus. It was bleeping Zacchaeus going by. But now he's called in love to Christ. He calls his name. And he's calling your name today. You're not a number. You're not a nameless face in the crowd. You're someone that Jesus knows. He knows your name. He knows your need. He loves you, and He's calling your name today. Jesus calls our name, and Jesus also welcomes us as friends. It's 
far as we know, this is the only time this happened exactly like this in the Bible, when Jesus invited himself over to someone else's house. He said, Zacchaeus, hurry down, come right now, because I must come to your house today. There's that word again, must. When he said to Nicodemus, you must be what? born again. When it is said when he was chasing down the heart, the soul of that woman in Samaria, he must go through Samaria. There's this, this missionary must in the heart of God. I must. And, and he says now to Zacchaeus, I must come to your house today. And he welcomed him as a friend as he welcomes you as a friend. I preached my first sermon when I was 15 years of age. I was invited to Fort Worth, Texas, to go across town to speak at the South Cliff Baptist Church. A man by the name of Frank Minton was the pastor. He pre- pitched in the Brooklyn Dodgers organization. He liked young baseball players. I was one. I had a few chances to speak around as a kid, uh, giving my testimony. So I was invited because I would given my life. I would said, Lord, here's my life. You can have it all, and I'm going to follow you. And I began preaching as a teenager, and I was invited over. And what are you going to preach for your first sermon? And I preached from John 15, chapter 15, and verse 5, I, or 15 rather. No longer do I call you servants, but I have called you my friends. It was always mind-blowing to me as a kid to this day as well that God would call me his friend, that I could be a friend of God that Jesus would welcome me. That's why we're always saying Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. It is a friendship. It's fellowship with God. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today. And oh, by the way, I'm bringing my buddies. There There are 13 of us in all, and we're coming for dinner. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. The book of Ephesians tells us that Christ is at home in our hearts. You know what home is? It's where you're comfortable. It's where you're with family, with friends. Home is home. Heaven is described as not a distant star in the galaxies, but a home, the Father's house. And home is where we are welcomed and accepted, and Christ is invited into our homes. We are accepted in the beloved, says the Scripture, accepted in the beloved. This man, Zacchaeus, like all of us, rejected, now accepted. I'm coming to your house. I'm going to abide with you. I'm going to stay with you. We're going to hang out together for the rest of your life. And then we're going home together in heaven. This story teaches us that great truth that Jesus knows your name and he welcomes you in, invites himself and welcomes you into your life. One final thing, not only does he know your name and he welcomes you as a friend, but He changes your life. Zacchaeus was changed just like that. Jesus said it in verse 9, today, today salvation has come to this house and, you know, my faith, you know, I, I believe not only was Zacchaeus saved, his whole household came to Christ. Who knows, they might have planted a church there in Jericho as followers of Jesus. But we know that Zacchaeus was saved by the presence of Jesus Christ now in his life. It says he received him gladly, joyfully. The greatest day of your life is when you come to Jesus. The best day of your life is the day you say, yes, Lord Jesus, come to my home, come to my life. And then he said, says he got up and he stood up. So he must have been on his knees in worship of of the Lord. But he stands up, having surrendered his life to the Lord. He stands up 
And he said, half of everything I own, I'm going to give it to the poor, to hurting people. And those I've defrauded, if I have cheated, defrauded, stolen from anyone, I'm going to pay back fourfold. This little guy who had a little heart has now got a huge heart, a big heart for God, for giving. He's no longer greedy, keeping his stuff. He's saying, Lord, here I am. You can have it all. It all belongs to you. When we're saved, we're surrendered to the Lordship of Christ. He is our master. Everything we are, everything we have belongs to Him. We say, Lord, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. That's salvation. He wasn't buying off or paying out his salvation. Salvation is by grace, but he is demonstrating the great work of grace and salvation in his life. He's saying, Lord, I want to now live my life for others, not just myself. And that's where true happiness is found, loving God and loving people. And so he changed his life. This little man is now living large. Because Christ has changed him. And he will change you. He's calling your name. He died on the cross for you. This was the last personal encounter between Jesus and another person recorded in the Bible before the cross. We've been talking about these conversions and conversations Jesus had with individuals. This is the end of the story almost on earth. He's on his way. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem for the last time to lay down his life, sacrifice for our sins. But on his way, he had enough time to stop for one little guy who needed to be saved. And Jesus of Nazareth, now risen from the dead, is passing this way today. And he's calling your name. If you don't know him, if you're lost, lonely, You're the least, the last. Some people think that guy would be the last person who would ever follow Jesus. You're the least, you're the last, you're the lost, you're the lonely. He's calling your name. And in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to do what Zacchaeus did, and that is to come down. Jesus said, come down, do it quickly, make make haste, come on. Move, Zacchaeus. And I'm going to invite you to come down and receive salvation gladly into your life. Would you join me in prayer? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Lord Jesus, thank you for this story. May it be our story. And may it ever be the mission of our church to do what it is your heart to do, to seek and to save the lost. May salvation come to our hearts, all of us, this day. Thank you for knowing our name and calling us out to you. I have a maker. He formed my heart. Before even time began, my life was in His hands. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. that falls and hears me when I call. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. So right where you are, watching online or television, listening on the radio, right here in this room, right now, today is the day of salvation. Bow your head and bow your heart to Him and say, Lord Jesus, 
I invite you into my life. I hear your call. I hear you calling my name. Jesus, you are welcome to come into my life, to cleanse me, to change me. I believe you died for me and rose again so that I could be saved from myself and my sin. Jesus, I call on your name. I call on your name as you call my name to follow you. And if you're asking Christ to come into your life today, then I'm going to ask you to do what Zacchaeus did. I'm going to ask you to come down. Our ministers are going to be here at the front, upstairs in the balcony. For those of you in the balcony, you prayed that prayer. You're inviting Christ into your life. Don't let the crowd keep you away. The crowd was an obstacle for, for Zacchaeus. But Jesus called him beyond the crowd to himself. And Jesus is calling you out of the crowd to himself today. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. We are your friends. Jesus is your friend. So come forward. Tell one of the ministers, upstairs or downstairs, I'm calling on the name of Jesus today. If you're a believer, you want to rededicate your life to Christ, you've been living for yourself, and you want to get right with God today, come today. Let us pray with you and for you and over you and strengthen you as you renew your faith. If you are a believer and you want to belong to Prestonwood and join us in the mission of Jesus to seek and to save the lost, I invite you to come and join today. Today, right now. Hurry, don't wait. We've waited long enough. The times are desperate and needy. Come to Jesus. Come to his church. Thank you, Lord, for your word, the witness, this gospel according to Zacchaeus. His life was changed by your power. Change lives today, Jesus, for we pray in your saving name. Amen and amen. Let's stand together, everyone standing, no one leaving. Our ministers are here. You've heard the invitation. Come. He's calling your name. Sing it right now. Yeah.